So this is a very, very important period. And hopefully you guys are planning your own Black Friday sales out there because I think you should try and capitalize on this time of year. And I just want to kind of show you just a few different bits and pieces that we're going to be getting up to um, to try to capitalize it ourselves. All right. It's Monday morning. Always the busiest day of the week and no different this week either. We've got, oh, we've got a lot to do. Courtney's back, fortunately. She was sick all of last week or the, the back end of last week and she messaged me today, this morning, just before, and she said, I'm coming in today and I'm really thankful for that because it's, it is Black Friday week. We've got a lot to do this week. It's the four busiest days of the year coming up for us. Uh, I mean, for anyone trying to sell anything. Um, now is the time of the year to do it. You guys don't need any any information around the, the importance of a Black Friday week. But I wanted to talk around just some of the things we're doing to prepare for it so that we're not gonna to be too stressed when it's actually happening. Because there's always gonna be a lot going on over that period. There's gonna be a lot that's gonna be selling that we need to ship out. And I really just want to kind of go through a few of the things that we're gonna be doing this week in this video today to be in a good position for it. Um, I'm gonna take you through the sales orders as well from the weekend. We had a very standard weekend of sales, two and a half thousand dollar sales week, a thousand dollars over the three day weekend period that we're gonna put into the mailbag today. Uh, I'll be taking you through, as I always do, some of the favorites that I had out of the sales um, and reasons as to why I thought they were quite good for you guys to be aware of. Uh, so we'll talk about that. And um, we're also about to do a Facebook Marketplace drop off, which is where I'm going now before we have the sales meeting with Courtney uh, at 11 o'clock. I'm dropping off this Jack Daniels luggage container uh, on wheels. I sold it for a hundred bucks and a magician is buying it. <laughs> a Gold Coast based magician, he's going to use it for his shows. Just amazing. Like when I listed it, I'm like, who would actually want this? And why would anyone want to pay a hundred dollars for this? Sure enough, I've got a magician buying it. So there's a lot to do today, guys. The camera's rolling all day. Hopefully you enjoy this little vlog. See you back at home. How are you, brother? Hey, mate, how you doing? How you doing? How's hey, things? Good on you, mate. Good Thanks to meet you. Nah, no stress. Yeah. Happy days. Great Thank one. you, mate. Good Appreciate it. Again. Unreal. Good See you later. Everybody. You too. There you go, guys. We got a hundred dollars. What a way to kick off the week. Actually, can I put the camera on you for a quick, oh, just a quick no. second? I just wanted to. How How are you going? With what? Are you feeling good? Mm, yeah. The, the viewers have been worried. Oh, did you tell them? Yeah. Yeah, no, nah, feeling a bit better, but I got my energy back, and yeah, hits the antibodies and rest. Tonsillitis. Yeah, never had it before. Nasty. Yeah. I was saying in the intro how with this week that we're about to have, that if you were out with tonsillitis, oh, oh it would have been the worst week of the world to have you not here. Literally. Um, so yes, speaking of the Black Friday week that we've got ahead, guys, I'll put some B-roll up here, Courtney. Mm -hmm. um, but we've got four, uh, four days coming up that we're going to be running this 40% off sale. We have four days, including today, before the sale. So this is a very, very important period. And hopefully you guys are planning your own Black Friday sales out there because I think you should try and capitalize on this time of year. And I just wanted to kind of show you just a few different bits and pieces that we're going to be getting up to um, to try to capitalize it ourselves. Um, I was saying uh, that we did about $1,000 over the weekend. We did, what did we do? It was 497 on Thursday, but then for the last three days, we did 281, 161, and then $351. Um, so it wasn't huge by any means. And what that's done is it's dropped us down to $381 average. Um, so we're doing 381 average when we need 433. So we're about 50 bucks a day down, I was telling Courtney in our sales meeting. Um, so we're going to try and boost this. Obviously, with naturally, with the Black Friday sale, uh, it'll be boosted, but we're going to try and boost it in these next four days as well because we've got all of this stuff over here, Courtney, um, which you, you wouldn't have really seen any of this, would you? No. So this is everything that I bought after you got sick. Um, we had a lot of DVDs that we bought off Jesse. Um, we had... Well, actually, this is all Jesse. Actually, I should really quickly say, what we're going to do from a listing standpoint... We're actually going to be planning to only list 90. So the goal is to list 90 items this week. We're going to actually only do 10 on the Black Friday days, uh, on the sale days. And we're going to do our typical 15 on the first four days. So that's only 90. We've definitely got 90 with the hats and all of these DVDs right here. Um, so that's kind of reassuring to know that Courtney can sit down for the next couple of days. She's focusing on 90 throughout her three shifts, and that's going to give us some really good sales numbers to hopefully tick through before we go bang with the sale. Um, 
So yeah, that's the lay of the land, $7,255. I think 13,000 is still achievable. Um, we just need to be really making sure that we're set up and ready to go for that sale. All right, uh, I figured we'd just go into a few more of those talking points around Black Friday, considering we're already hitting off the first topic around listings. Um, the other thing that we're gonna to wanna to do, I think over this next week, is decide on what our goal should be from a revenue perspective. You wanna know what you're kind of attacking, what do you wanna try and achieve out of it? And it also just makes it a little bit more fun when you can try and set yourself a target to knock down. So we are gonna try and set a goal of $4,000 in four days. Do you reckon we can do that? Yeah. I hope so. We did 4,000, we did 2,000 in two days. So that's the reason why I'm saying 4,000 in four days. Um, don't know if it's completely achievable or not, but that's gonna be our number. And hopefully come this time next week, Monday afternoon, uh, we'll be on track to hit at least the $4,000 um, by the end of it. The other thing that we're also gonna be doing is we're gonna be running a, we really wanna use social media because we've got it and we've been working so hard on it. Um, so we wanna use social media to promote even further sales. So there's gonna be an Instagram sale that we're gonna be running throughout the week. And there's also gonna be a YouTube sale that we're gonna be running to you guys. Um, that's gonna be a little bit of a better incentive to the 40% off that we're doing for just standard eBay customers. Um, so if you've got a social media um, presence of any kind, say you've got a couple of hundred followers, um, don't be afraid to put up some of your stock and say, hey, I bought it for this, I'm listing it for this on eBay, but if you want it, you can get it for half price. We're gonna do that all of this week. Um, it's not something we normally do, um, but I figured now is a great time of year to at least trial that sort of thing. Um, so there it is there, promote on social media. That's gonna be a big one. Uh, and then we're also gonna spend an hour each day improving titles. I think that's a huge thing to focus on at any time of year on eBay. But we're gonna spend a lot of time, or probably myself more than anything, because Courtney's gonna focus on listing up these 90 items. She's gonna get the shipping off. I'm probably just gonna spend a bit of time fixing up titles from even years ago. Um, it's a task that I really wish I've gotten onto a whole lot quicker because the title is just such a fundamental piece for your item actually being found by a customer on eBay. Um, so if you are to try and critique and fix up anything on your eBay store, I would recommend titles first. And then very quickly, I would recommend photos after that. Um, so we're gonna work on our titles. We're also gonna work on our SKU system because it's probably not something that we've touched on a massive amount, is it? It's a work in progress. It's always been a work in progress. Um, we initially, I never had a SKU system. I think I documented that fairly clearly over the years. Uh, and then when Courtney started, it was very apparent that if I didn't have a, Q, a SKU system, how was Courtney ever to find anything? Um, especially more so when I went to the States. Um, so we did a lot of work to skew up. Oh, do you reckon half is skewed? Nah. Not even? No, a no. third maybe. A third, a third, yeah, probably a third. Um, so we would like to, with this obviously increased volume in sales, uh, work on another thing that we wish we'd done a lot sooner and that is complete our SKU. Um, so we're gonna skew a whole lot more over the next few days in preparation. And then I'm gonna do something that I should have done a year ago when you first started. This is really just more so highlighting the fact of how many holes there are in this in this little business. Um, I'm just going to get my Dymo label printer back up and running because a lot of you guys see in the comments um, or read in the or say in the comments um, that you're just always penning your envelopes. It takes, takes so much longer. Takes so much longer, um, and that's just pure laziness on my part because I've just used the paper and the printer, the Epson printer that we've got, to just print out labels, and I haven't found it too much of a stress to like cut and stick. That part's quick. Or at least not that long. Yeah. But, well, no, of course, it's like, no, you can just give me a Dymo for everything. Um, so we're going to basically just get the Dymo sorted, and I'm going to make sure that that's up and running so that we can just print out the Dymo, put the sticker on, and you're done. I think around Dymo chat, um, it's a beginner question. A lot of people say, when do I get a Dymo label? I would say probably when you're doing five sales a day. That's probably a good time. I mean, we're doing 10 sales a day. We've done 10 sales a day without a Dymo for the last nine months. Um, so you can absolutely do it without one. They are pretty expensive. Um, but if you wanted to save uh, you know, time and efficiency, I reckon five listing or five sales a day, you should um, consider it. You don't need to, maybe 10 is probably the answer. Um, so we're gonna do that. And then we're also gonna stock up before the sale, before Friday on sto uh, postage, postage supplies, postage stationery. I'm gonna go and get a bunch of boxes, a bunch of bubble wrap. I'm gonna look at all of our um, envelopes. I'm gonna look at our satchel levels. And I'm just gonna make sure that over the next four days throughout that sale, we don't need to leave the house. We can literally just grab, put into a bag, have the Dymo label set up, sticker it down. So it's just gonna be a really quick and seamless process, which you're probably thinking is what it always should be. But 
We haven't really, not. we have not been doing that. <laughs> so this is more an education, I guess, around just good eBay practices uh, rather than a Black Friday sale. But I think if we focus on these, what, seven things, uh, we will be prepped and we will be ready to go for a very, very strong Black Friday sale. The thing that's going to make this a success is literally just having 40% off our stock. That's mm. the whole reason why this thing works. What we're trying to do here is one, make it a little bit fun by setting ourselves a bit of a goal. So set yourself a number. What would you like to try and achieve? Um, know what discount that you're going to be putting on for your sale ahead of the game. And then prep for it in those different ways that we've chosen to prep for ours. If you think there's anything that we're missing that we should be doing, this video goes out on a Tuesday. The sale is this Friday, so three days into upload. Uh, if there's anything else that we should be attacking over the next few days, let us know in the comments. But uh, I think if we can tick this off, we might be ready for a $4,000 Black Friday period. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, time to have a look at some sales. We had 30 sales that came in over the weekend and I'm going to take you through, I think it's about, I think it's about nine, nine of the ones that I think are interesting enough to talk about. Now, Jesse's got a whole bunch of stuff for us now to be able to list up off that bulk purchase. However, I wasn't even able to get this one into the listing room before it was actually purchased off the YouTube video. Um, so Nathan, a viewer of the, uh, of the channel, uh, a subscriber, has gone ahead and bought this one for $50. It's something that I was probably going to list up for about $60, maybe $70. Um, it is just a really cool vintage, old school, New South Wales Blues uh, rugby league hat. And um, the Tui's branding there is a really good little one to give away the fact that it is quite vintage. Tui's was a sponsor from a little while ago. So when I see anything New South Wales or Queensland with the Tui's uh, branding, I know sort of its error. Um, and that was a really good hat, really cool design, cool embroidery, $50. We're going to put that one into a box I think um, I think this one right here Courtney I just did a trip to Bunnings and really that's what we do with our hats we get a lot of questions around the hats guys but we're so nonchalant around it I guess is the terminology that we kind of put it in there like that and then we'll just go ahead and we'll grab some of this butcher's paper up here and we'll just put the butcher's paper in that little part there and then from there you just send it off like that and that'll go for the same price as a small satchel so it's going to send off for about eight dollars and fifty cents uh, weight's never an issue with this sort of an item so you're just really ultimately putting it in a box because you want to kind of protect the brim rather than putting it into a, a satchel and getting that thing crushed so that one's set up and ready to go bit of butcher's paper and that sale will be out the door um this was another one from jesse's video so i think we should talk about that one now We've got the PlayStation 2 console, um, which is just the console only, and a couple of memory cards, a couple of eight megabyte memory cards that have come along with it. 75 bucks, Courtney. That's good. That's a, that's a pretty decent quick sale price, I thought. Yeah. Um, it's the SCPH39002. Um, tested and working, put some cables with it off an old PlayStation 2 that I had. Uh, seemed to turn on fine, so $75 worth of a sale price. Not too much of a big bulky item, but... You can see up here, Courtney, we've got quite a number of different boxes uh, today that we can pick from. So it might go into something like that, I think. That looks like it might, yeah, yeah. that'll fit perfectly. Um, so a bit of bubble wrap, we'll whack that one. That'll be fine, that'll be easy. Um, what else do we wanna do? Hmm. Let's do this one. Yeah. All right, so this one is you guys may have remembered, let me know in the comments if you do remember this purchase. It was at the flea market, I want to say maybe six weeks ago. I bought a bundle of DVDs that were all wrestling DVDs. And that one there as a bundle sold for $14 as a bit of a bread and butter. But this one here, we got a $60 sale price. So between these two sales, it makes up probably about 10% of the number of DVDs that we picked up but we made all of our money back selling them in nice big group bundles just like this. If you had a look at all of these, they're all early 2000s. So this one's 2003, this one's 2003. It was all those early 2000s and the earlier you get them, late 90s, early 2000s, they sell for more on average when you look at the comps on eBay. So I was really lucky to see that all of these, when I bought them, I was like, oh, absolutely, I'll go ahead and grab these because they were all, I think they're literally all 20, uh, 2003, which is why they've sold for so much money. Says a little piece of inside knowledge. Um, 
What else? We had some $30 games sell. I've got three of them here. Just, just a random allocation of video games. So we got a game that I picked up when I was in America. So this is Yu-Gi-Oh. I can't pronounce the name of that. I don't know if you can, Corny. It's Reshift Destruction. Reshift Destruction. Here we go again. Yeah, go again. <laughs> Retake. Uh, this one, this one is an American copy, but these Game Boy Advance games play, uh, even though they say USA down the bottom there. It still plays out fine. Um, so yeah, we got a thirty dollars sale price on that, and then we got two thirty dollars sale prices on Time Splitter Two on the PS Two. And then we've got Super Paper Mario for $30 as well. I was so surprised to see this one sit around on the game shelf for so long. Mm. Super Paper Mario. I think this has been here for a couple of months. And really? this, yeah, this is the sort of game that should go pretty quick. Um, but finally, we did get it to go. And then Time Splitters 2. A um, couple of light scratches on that one there, but that'll go off completely fine. We're going to put them into a tracked medium post, uh, medium envelope, medium sized envelope, and that'll ship off for about six bucks or so. So there are three $30 games. Uh, and then we had, oh, we had a return to sender in a recent vlog. Um, this was return to sender, falling skies. This wasn't the one that was going to Israel and then with the war that was going on, yeah. everyone was like, that's why it never went to Israel. Yeah, of course. Which makes complete sense. Yeah. Uh, I don't know why I didn't think of that at the time. But this one was the other one. Um, falling Skies, and then we put it back up for sale, and I think that vlog was like last Tuesday, oh, must have been last Monday. Mm. So within the space of five or six days, we've sold this again for forty five dollars. Um, so it was a fifty dollar asking price, ten bucks each for the TV shows, and uh, we took a best offer for forty five dollars. So put it into a small satchel, domestic sale. Mm. Um, that won't be a stress. Monster TV show, this one right here. Uh, we've got. Heartbeat, the complete 17th season. So, being just a single season DVD, you wouldn't assume if you were never doing DVDs that this would actually go on to sell for some decent money. Uh, but we've got $35 for just this one season. Yeah, so good. Do you know the full um, sale price if you had all 18 seasons of this show? Like 500 or something? Yeah. Yeah. There it is. <laughs> well done. Uh, yeah, about 500 bucks. Yeah. So... It's a, it's a big bolo show to be finding. And again, just like the wrestling DVDs that we were looking at before, you want to be finding the later seasons. So the reason why we're getting $35 for this DVD is because it's a season 17. If it was a season one, I'm going to whack a screen grab of a comp on eBay to show you what season one sells for. And then I'll show you the comp for this one. And you can see that there's a massive fluctuation in value. Um, at least I hope there is. I'm pretty sure there is. Mm. Um, because of the season and the fact that people are trying to complete their season sets and they might not have the later seasons, but most people have got the earlier seasons. That's where the, uh, the pricing fluctuation occurs. So 35, we've got an international sale price on that one there. Even though it's a region four, always turn your international postage on. $20 worth of international postage turns this into $55 worth of revenue. Uh, so that was pretty exciting. And then this one, um, we've got this one here, Ali McBeal, the complete series. Um, I never watched Ali McBeal, but it is, I know it was a very popular show. Um, all five seasons, complete box set. It's a region one, which means it only plays in the USA. Um, and it went over there as well. I think it went to Mexico. Um, so this one's going to have to be... Uh, we were saying before, Courtney, what we're going to do with this, and let us know in the comments if you would do this yourself. We're going to put butcher's paper around it for no other reason than to cover up what the item is mm. it's a very sturdy yeah. box and once the butcher's paper is around it we're going to put a couple of layers worth of um, bubble wrap and then we're going to put the label for Australia Post on that mm. and we're going to send it off as a bubble wrap box um, let me know in the comments if that's something you would do or would not do if we're just a little weird <laughs> um, we've never had negative feedback when we have done it on those previous 20 sales um, so yeah, bread and butter's over there for Courtney. We've got nine sales here, which I thought were pretty cool. How long do you reckon this will take for you to be able to knock over? A few... An hour or two? Hour or two? Let's give you two hours. Yeah. And we'll see how quickly you can do it. We've got a special announcement for the viewers. Yes, we do. We have, which everyone knows, but we have the four-day Black Friday 40% off. 
coming up, but we've decided this week for the videos that we're posting this week, we're gonna put five items that we'll choose here for 50% off to you guys. And we've just walked around now actually and decided, I think one from almost each category, um, which one we're gonna do. They're all like very cool items, vintage and expensive, I guess. That haven't sold. Yeah. So the first one is this hat. It is a vintage 1997, how do you say it, Grand Prairie? I like the way you pronounce that. Everyone gets That's, up. Everyone um, gets up me for pronunciation. Um, no, it's me. Grand Prix. Grand, Grand Prix. <laughs> F one. The F one. Before you, you form the one race car. Race yeah, car drivers. I just don't really watch it, but yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's a sick hat. It is a very sick hat. Yeah. So, so that was listed. We have it for fifty. Have it for fifty. And what are we going to sell it for? We're going to sell it for twenty five. Twenty five dollars. Yeah. That's not bad. Yeah, free postage, 25 for a vintage art. Yeah. The second item is gonna be these. We have got a Lee Nang Jimmy Butler pair of basketball shoes. These are a men's US size eight and a half. We've got them listed up for $75. We're gonna sell them to any one of you guys that might be interested uh, for 30 bucks. 30 bucks for a pair of, he's only just signed with this new Lee Nang Chinese brand. It could be the next biggest brand out there. Um, first time I've ever found them in a thrift store. I bought them probably about a month ago. Um, I'm gonna get rid of them. $30 for anybody out there that wants them. Size eight and a half. Uh, we're also gonna do Yakuza 4 uh, on the PlayStation 3. I bought that off Jesse a couple of days ago, so I have no idea about how quickly this thing might sell, but it's brand new, it's like new, and we're gonna do it for 15 bucks. 15 bucks usually sells for about $35. Um, so that's pretty good value. And then we're also gonna do this as well. A Super Smash Bro Amiibo. Um, I don't even know which Amiibo. Falco, yeah, Falco number 52. I think it sells for about 50 bucks, this uh, this one here, and we're gonna do it for $20. $20, free postage. You'd actually be able to profit on that if you wanted to sell it for some good money. Um, so there's those, and I'm also gonna do a bigger guy. Um, we're gonna give away, not give away, but we're gonna pretty much give away with 50% discount, mm. um, this New South Wales jersey. Um, there's obviously a little bit of wear. The sponsorship on the front there has been taken off, but this is a commemorative uh, 2008. It's a centenary of rugby league jersey. It is, it is a touch smaller, it is a size small in size, um, but we're gonna do this one for $50. We've had it listed up for 100 bucks, uh, but 50% off, we're gonna give it away to somebody that wants to pick it up for just the $50. So there you go, five items, heavily reduced. It's the kickoff of Black Friday. Um, some pretty good items that you can hopefully make some money on, or just keep them for your own personal collection. Well, Courtney's got a lot to get up uh, listed. I've got a lot to, well, work through for this Black Friday sale. It's been a pretty big day. Um, the post got off. Courtney, you actually did it in two hours. Mm. You did really well. Yeah. I think you're actually even, even better than two hours. Um, so, yeah, she's jumping into the listings. Uh, 25,000 subscribers by Christmas. That's our goal. Um, we really want to try and get there by the 25th of December. So, if you haven't hit the subscribe button, Go ahead and do so. If you missed last week's Monday vlog, I'm gonna put it for you right here. Thanks very much for being here. Thanks very much, Courtney, for all your help. Thank you. See you soon.